Before the world was maddened by the arrival of coronavirus, I sat down with presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hengari to discuss the state of the nation just before the elections. I asked presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hengari to describe the temperament or the vibe at State House just before the elections. The president uh, is uh, serene. Um, Namibians voted peacefully. Uh, they re-elected uh, President Gengop as the head of state in their majority. Uh, so uh, the president is uh, currently preparing for his next administration uh, as an inclusive uh, and consultative leader, uh, meeting Namibians, talking to them. Uh, and uh, on the 21st of March, uh, uh, a new government will be communicated. Many Namibians expressed dissatisfaction with the court ruling that ruled the use of EVMs without a paper trail unconstitutional. I put this to Alfredo Hengari. Namibia is uh, a constitutional democracy. Uh, on the 21st of March 1990, we agreed that uh, we will have a country that is governed by rule of law. Uh, President Gengob has been emphasizing throughout uh, his uh, political career that uh, it is important to have processes, systems and institutions uh, when individuals are aggrieved by decisions or by actions of government or whatever uh, institution, uh, they can go to court. Uh, the judiciary in this country is independent. Uh, so what happened following the, uh, the elections of last year, there were some uh, individuals who, who did not agree with the outcome. They went to courts of law. The Supreme Court, which is the highest court in the land, pronounced itself about the validity of the victory of President Hage Gengob. As Namibians, uh, as a country uh, that is governed by rule of law, we have to accept that verdict. I asked Hengari how we are to reconcile that when we have parliamentarians who have criminal records and the justice minister who is currently in jail having changed the laws to suit a few. Those ministers uh, that were implicated in wrongdoing have been relieved of their duties at the time we are talking. Uh, they are currently facing the courts. Uh, so we have to also appreciate the fact that in this country, things are not swept under the carpet. Uh, it is why uh, the ministers the, the, uh, were forced to resign, relieved of their duties as we speak. They are facing the courts of law. So what is important in the fight against corruption is the competencies of your institutions. Uh, in this country, corruption does not go unpunished. And the so-called fish fraud that you're talking about is a clear demonstration of the fact that allegations of, of wrongdoing will not be left unpunished. President Gengob is very clear with regard to the fight against corruption. You know that very well, that when he came into office, declared his assets in order to assure Namibians that uh, office will not be used for self-enrichment. Set the tone, set the example. There are ministers who followed suit. In the, for, in the coming administration, President Gengob was very clear during the opening of a cabinet in, March, in, in February, that all ministers will be expected to declare their assets publicly. Now, these are clear acts of transparency, which we also don't see in many other countries. So it signals the commitment of the president to clean and effective governance. The Fishwatch scandal revealed that the president and the Swapo party were implicated in having received funds sourced from corruption. I put this to Hengari. To say that the president is uh, implicated in any act of wrongdoing, be it with regard to fish rot or any other act, is entirely false. Because so far, there's no grain of evidence or truth 
that implicates the president in any act of wrongdoing. So, uh, so on that score, we should not peddle untruths. Swapo was born out of Namibia's independence struggle. To declare that Namibia is forever free. Swapo is the one that liberated the country, but there is no separation of power. The party has won every election since independence in 1990 and controls all public institutions. Corruption has become the order of the day. The moment you speak about it is the moment you are close to your graveyard in all ways. Johannes says the corruption he experienced went right to the top of the party. In 2014, he was asked for a political donation by James Hadokalipi on behalf of the incoming president, Hagi Gengob. James called me and asked us to pay him 140,000 US dollars because the president needed to pay his fellow Swapo members because there was an election coming in the party two months later. Leaked emails appear to confirm that a payment equivalent to 140,000 US dollars was made. It was said to be for the party. We have no evidence that President Gengob had personal knowledge of this. I called Torsten, the CEO of Samheri, and asked uh, if we should do it, and he immediately gave a green light. So we paid James, which was meant for the president. Thank you for joining me for this It's a Wrap exclusive with presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hingari, with whom I spoke about the state of the nation before Namibia celebrated her 30th independence. I asked presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hingari whether he means that the president does not have any gains from fishing quotas. That's what I'm telling you, that the president is not implicated in any act of wrongdoing with regard to fish rod or any other uh, malpractice. President Gengob is championing the fight against corruption and the efforts of this country under President Gengob with regard to championing, championing the fight against corruption are widely recognized. We saw the intimidation of citizens by the security forces before and after elections. And I asked presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hengari why State House decided to blockade the street in front of the State House? It is completely untrue. If you go to State House now, there's no blockade. Mm. You can go now. So if you, if you do your, your research, Some, because, 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 because uh, uh, the evidence is there, there's no blockade at State House. Why was there one? And uh, as a, at, at, at no point, the president is a committed Democrat. Uh, and does not believe in intimidation of political opponents. Uh, the president has fought many elections, won many, and lost some in the past. And it tells you, uh, it signals the commitment of the president to democratic governance. President Gengob left this country to fight for democracy, and he will not be the one will undermine democratic governance. I pushed further and asked him whether he meant that the brutalization of citizens experienced over the past few months had nothing to do with intimidation. I think at times we, we speak alarmingly uh, and uh, also in a manner that is sensational in order to amplify or construct a problem that is not there. And this is clearly the case. Uh, Namibia has no record 
of intimidating citizens for, for by when they express themselves. Namibia has no record. What country? Uh, Namibia has no <laughs> Namibia has, has no record. No, no. I'm just trying to tell you because uh, you know there are clear indicators. There, are, the, no, no. There, there, there are clear indicators. Uh, Human Rights Council in Geneva, Amnesty International. They issue reports on this country, and when you are talking in a manner that is exaggerated about brutality in this country, I should ask you in which country you live. Yes, there has been isolated incidences. Isolated incidences. Uh, where during uh, oper uh, the joint crime fighting operations uh, a person was killed. But what I can assure you now and what you should know as well and what you know as a journalist is the fact that when someone, uniformed personnel or any other person commit, commits a crime they face the full, the full wrath of the law. So the soldier who shot a Zimbabwean uh, national who was here in this country, a taxi driver, that officer is facing a, co a court of law. They've been 73. So that's what I, that's, I, think, I think that's what I'm trying to tell you now. If there's any act of wrongdoing by uniformed personnel, President Gengob is very clear. He has stated that repeatedly, that if anyone operates outside the law, the rules of engagement, they must face the institutions of the state. I interjected and mentioned a few cases which clearly illustrate the brutalization of Namibians. You are trying to portray Namibia as a haven of brutality which is not the case at all that's why i'm asking in which country do you live because that's not namibia the stories mm. i've reported on have been about indi individual namibians whether they are lgbtq or just regular citizens living but you cannot houses. take you cannot take isolated incidences well, and try to make them and try to make them appear as if is the order of the day. Exceptions don't confirm the rule at all. Since when do they confirm the rule? So why would we have so many cases against the police? The LAC got involved last year to make sure that they can build a stronger case against the brutalization of citizens in this country. I'm not disputing isolated incidences of excessive no. force. I'm not. But what I'm disputing is your attempt, misplaced attempt, to portray Namibia as a haven of brutality when it is not. We, we never portrayed this it as is, a haven. We are saying these things are happening and it's never happened before in our history except for... That is, that, 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 is, that, is, that is completely untrue. That is completely untrue. You do have incidences of violence, uh, you you do have isolated incidences of uh, of excessive force that you have everywhere in the world, but to try and portray as you try to do Namibia as a haven of brutality is entirely incorrect. It's it's just it's 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 not it's not necessary because that's just not the Namibia we know. This country for the past thirty years has been peaceful. Namibia has one of the most robust democracies on this continent. It's a model democracy in Africa, and you know that. So we cannot today, on the eve of our 30th independ independence anniversary, try and portray Namibia as chaotic when it has not been. Thank you for joining me for this It's a Wrap exclusive with presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hingari, with whom I spoke about the state of the nation before Namibia celebrated her 30th independence.
There were calls by some Namibians to boycott independence celebrations, not only because coronavirus has come into the fray, but also because some people disputed the eligibility of the president's term because of the irregularities that occurred during and after the elections. Presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hengari had this to say. President Gengob is the legitimately elected president of the Republic of Namibia. Elected by whom? By the majority of Namibians. As Democrats, we have to respect the sovereignty of the people. When the majority has spoken, we have the obligation to respect their vote. That's what democracy is all about. You and I have that obligation. All Namibians have the obligation because once the president is elected by the majority, is the president of all Namibians, not those who voted for him, but all Namibians. So we have to put that language behind us. It's, uh, the aim is clear, is to divide Namibians, is to create doubts, but Namibians will not be deterred. Namibians voted for a president. They elected President Hage Gengob as their head of state. That uh, there are people who deliberately, or maybe some out of ignorance, don't understand what the Supreme Court said. The Supreme Court was very clear about the validity and legitimacy of the results in as far as the issue under contest was concerned which is the presidential election. As I, as I mentioned, there's no case of coronavirus recorded in Namibia. And the 31 delegates that you might bring from other countries? And uh, independent celebrations will continue as planned. Uh, we are proceeding with this milestone anniversary for us as Namibians. It's about us recognizing that we have traveled a long journey, we still have a long way to go. The president says that all the time, we still have a long way to go. Our society is structurally unequal and it should not continue like that. But there are many things that we've done so well together as Namibians and there's a reason to celebrate that aspect of our life as Namibians. I interjected and asked him, can we be proud in a country where our state hospital is falling apart to the point where patients have to fight off rats and cats? I mentioned some of Namibia's schools and asked them, apart from peace and stability, what exactly is it that we're going to be celebrating? The fact that we are having uh, this conversation that you and I under a parade Namibia would not have in this part of the city, that's an achievement. We, we fought for our freedoms and we got them. We are currently on a journey of prosperity for all Namibians. The things that you're talking about, Na Namibia is a country that has one of the best social protection systems in Africa. We should not forget that not so long ago, about four years ago, President Gengob doubled the old age pension from 600 to 1,200 so that your, your mother, your grandmother, can have a far better life. And it's a reality that we are talking about have here. Have you ever lived on 1,200 uh, bucks and uh, had grandchildren? Now, have you, have, have, you, have you tried to live on 600? Try to live on 600 if you are saying 1,200 is not enough. Try to live on 600. And that's the realization of, of President Gengob that nobody can live on 600, especially not the elderly who are suffering, some of them who have to look after their grandkids and so on. So he doubled that old age pension. The best way to fight poverty is to put more money in the pockets of Namibians. President Gengob has done that. This country has grants for vulnerable children. This country has grants for orphans. This country has grants for people with, living with disability. Now that's the progress that we're talking about. In 1994, over 70% of Namibians were living in poverty. At the time that I'm speaking to you, that has been reduced to about 
So that's the new Namibia that we're talking about. President Gengo repeatedly says Namibia today is a far different place compared to Namibia in 1990. You and I know that. I'm old enough to know that. Maybe some of you are not old enough to know that, but I'm old enough to know that. That the Namibia today is one that is widely recognized as the country with the best road infrastructure in Africa. That's the World Economic Forum in 2018 saying that about Namibia. Namibia today, from 1992 now, a thousand schools have been added onto the system. That's Namibia today. Namibia today has two well-recognized universities where black learners who were denied opportunities, who could, only, who could only dream to become a teacher or a clerk at the at a bank. Today, they are excelling in many fields of human endeavor, scientists, en engineers. That's the Namibia we are, we are talking about. It's that, that's the Namibia many of you also ought to talk about. I asked presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hengari what he makes of the Swapo party having organized a march against those who were demonstrating against the use of EVMs and questioning President Hage Gengob's legitimacy. What I can share with you is the fact that Namibians in their majority have closed that debate as to who is their president. That debate is closed. There's no conversation about it. There's no turning back. Uh, because democratically, we expressed ourselves and we said we want President Hage G. Gengob to continue as our head of state. The president will live up to the challenge. The president, in his uh, uh, acceptance remarks, New Year's statement, clearly indicated to Namibians that he has had Namibians on the issues that have been raised. The president is attentive to the needs of Namibians. That's his primary commitment. He has lived his entire life to serve Namibians at a time when other young people were chilling. The president Gengo, as a young Namibian, was fighting to liberate this country. Finally, I asked presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hengari to describe the role that President Hage Gengob played during our liberation struggle. President Gengob left uh, Namibia at a very young age, the age of 21. Um, a very difficult and dangerous journey into exile in Botswana for a year without any shelter. Uh, Three months in the in the in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in the Congo, without speaking a word of French, not knowing what tomorrow may may bring, um, and led decisively uh, Namibia's efforts at the United Nations as Swapo's representative, chief representative to the Americas, uh, and continued the journey in Lusaka, training Namibians to prepare them for independence one day. Today, we have Namibians who are excelling in different fields because they went through the institute of which uh, President Gengo was the head. Uh, the role of President Gengo in the struggle for independence is, 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 is a tall one. Uh, it cannot be the subject of a discussion of two minutes. I think we'll need days, weeks to talk about it. So there's no conversation about that. And, and I think, in fact, we know why he's the third president of this republic. It's because of his outstanding contributions to the liberation struggle and his outstanding contributions as Namibia's first prime minister. That's, that's our third president. And with that, it's a wrap. Make sure you catch it's a wrap in our new time slots. Now on Sunday evenings from 7.30 with repeats on Tuesday mornings at 6.30 and in the evenings at 8.30. Stay woke and thanks for watching.
Thank <laughs> you.